Howdy, 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 my name is Anasha Sasuke, welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, we started at the Ancient Precog, and we stopped at the Harvested Men. Which was not as horrifying as it sounded like it was going to be, but it was still pretty bad for that guy. Now in this one, we're going to start with the Infinite Forest, and we're going to stop at Window to the World, due to the fact that tomorrow's episode is going to be episode 100, and it's going to be 420, and it's SCP-420. And I thought that was cool, so I'm going to just have this episode be four entries instead of five, for the sole purpose of doing that. In the event that the episode ends up in like 20 minutes or so, I'll probably go read some more of the random things that happen with SCP-261. Because that's just going to be the filler page from now on, I guess. So, Infinite Forest. It's Euclid. It could have been Keter, but it is not. So, owing to its anomalous topographic nature, uh, excuse me, structure and the danger it poses to civilians, it is essential that 416 be sequestered from the public. Though SCP-416's true borders have yet to be exactly mapped, SCP Overwatch has, in cooperation with the blank government, restricted foot access and instituted a no-fly zone within 5 kilometers from the boundaries measured by the initial observation team. SCP-416 is an oblong area of forest located in the blankety blank and northern blank blank blank. Though its true borders are not known, and indeed may be in constant state of flux, estimates place its center at blankety blank north blankety blank west. It displays remarkable spatial anomalies, the most notable of which is that once entered, it is impossible to leave on foot. The only personnel to escape the area inside 416 were extracted by an aerial reconnaissance team. Though, the, uh, though from the air 416 it appears identical to the surrounding coniferous forest, it displays a bewildering array of plant life. Species as varied as Joshua trees, Yucca brev brevifolia, Grandidier's baobab, uh, Adansonia, Grandidieri, Willem, uh, Willemi Pine, Willemia Nobilis, and Macaneal Trees, Hippomane Mancinella, I have definitely probably summoned something in southern Mexico, um, have all been observed. No explanation has been offered as to how these species arrived and propagated. All observations indicate that 416 is entirely devoid of animal, fungal, or insect life. Personnel deployed inside 460 report that the entire area is continually overcast with fog, despite satellite evidence to the contrary. Exploratory records. On blankety blank blank, local geographical surveyors have reported a sudden seismic event coming from the area now known as 416. The foundation was alerted after the surveyors reported anomalous topographical, uh, to, uh, me, topological features. Disposable dudes were fitted with GPSs and tasked with walking across the entire area of 416. Though the subjects reported that they maintained a constant speed, their movement speed relative to the area outside 416 slowed dramatically as the subjects ventured, ventured further in. The deployed personnel were unable to reach the epicenter of the seismic event. The subjects reported no indication of backtracking on their part. It appears that 416 may be in, in, infinite in area to observers located within it. The disposable dudes forced to endure prolonged stays inside 416 have developed a wide array of mental instabilities, ranging from depression and PTSD to catatonia, hallucinations, and psychosis. Topological analysis. A team of physicists assigned to analyze the topographical nature uh, me, anomalies. I keep why do I keep saying natures? Natures isn't written here. Associated with this SCP concluded that there appears to be that it appears to be the three-dimensional intersection of a six-dimensional calib uh Calabi Yao manifold with the surface of the Earth. Research has still been conducted as to what force maintains this intersection, though speculation abounds that it is related to the object or objects at the center of 416. Addendum 4 5. Uh, 4 through 5, I guess. 416 has been considered as a storage location for several movable safe and Euclid level SCPs, specifically data expunged. So, this forest sounds like it's basically hammer space. Sort of. Not exactly. It's not Hammer Space. I don't know why that was the conclusion I came to. Oh, but hey! Um, in the last episode, well, not the last episode, the thing that posted, the first video that I posted yesterday, um, it mentioned the fruit of 417, and 417 is apparently known as the Plague Tree. And it's Euclid, but potentially Keter. So I guess I use a whimsical Keter voice? Due to 417's inability to be moved safely, 417 remains stationary in blank. The area surrounding 417, 2.58 kilometers approximately, is patrolled by 
guards and border with a chain link fence topped with barbed wire. Civilians are informed that a small village with a highly virulent plague is being quarantined until further notice. Trespassers are to be shot on sight. Only disposable dudes are permitted to directly handle and work with 417. As wild animals seem to instinctively askew 417, no action need be taken against animals seen in the enclosed area. All victims bitten by 4171 may be bitten by 4171 may be granted immediate euthanasia on request, and their body is to be placed in a sealed container and cremated immediately. Those that do not request will have the same immediate termination, except in the case of test subjects. 417 resembles an African baobab tree in general size and structure, though it lacks leaves, giving it a dead appearance. Its bark has a drab, off-color appearance. Let's see what the Baobab tree looks like. Because it's the second time this episode has been mentioned, and we should probably see what it is. Oh, uh, it's one of those! Now we know. It's kind of like the tree from the middle of the, uh, the jungle or savannah or whatever in Lion King. As a matter of fact, let's see what happens if I check that. I am not insane! It is just like that. It is, it is in fact, apparently one of those. Anyway, its bark has a drab off-color appearance. Despite the absence of leaves, 417 bears fruit at every sundown. Small buds form as the sun rises and the fruit grows and matures quickly over the course of the day, before ripening into pomegranate-sized, hard-husked fruit. This fruit has dark purple-black skin and a mostly smooth texture that grows peppily as it becomes overripe. This hard husk may be cut or peeled away by hand or with tools. Removal of the skin reveals no fruit or pulp, but a hollow cavity containing several insects collectively known as 4171. The appearance and species of one change from fruit to fruit, as well as the scope of the ensuing swarm. See Addendum 417b. One will unanimously attack anything that moves with startlingly painful bites. Within the first few minutes, bites sustained from the swarm swell into painful red sores with minor puncture wounds. No known remedy will soothe the pain of the bites. In 5% of recorded cases, bites have no lasting effect and the swelling and pain reduce after a few days. 45% of the time, those bitten will begin to have convulsions and suffer from a fatal heart attack within several hours. At that stage, their body will rot and dissolve at an accelerated rate. In the area where their body had been, a new tree will begin to grow over the course of the next few days. In the remaining 50%, after an indeterminate period of 2 to 24 hours, those afflicted begin to complain of severe pains and muscle, ast muscle atrophy. Expelling flesh by data expunged appear to coincide with the approximate mass of one. While growing, the plague trees, as they have been dubbed, are vulnerable to being felled, incineration, and conventional herbicides. 417 cannot be moved, as all attempts to fell or shift the original tree result in severe agitation of the branches, causing all instances of the fruit to fall to the ground, splitting and releasing massive swarms of one. Thankfully, one does not seem to survive for longer than two out one to two hours, dying with little incident. If the fruit of 417 is not picked or shaken off the branches, it simply rots on the branches and falls to the ground with no ill effects. Addendum A. Although 417 is currently listed as a Euclid class item, its potential for spreading has sparked some argument over a possible transfer to Keter class. Notable specimens of one. Several dozen creatures resembling Black Widow spiders except with only four long cricket-like legs that each allow for them to make astonishingly long, fast jumps. 20 wasps with red and orange stripes and wings similar to those of a butterfly, capable of surprisingly fast flight. A single black millipede, 5 meters long, curled into a ball inside the fruit. Thousands of tiny fruit fly as creatures that emitted a high-pitched buzzing. So, well for one thing, reading uh, reading in the heater voice like that is interesting. I've, I've... I had not actually tried yet reading the serious Keter voice, but in the up-down way I usually talk. So it was interesting doing that. Now I, now I know that's the thing that I am capable of. Next up is the Human Jigsaw. Now does that mean that they are a jigsaw or a jigsaw puzzle? Let's find out. 418 is to be kept in a standard humanoid containment cell with Category 3 surveillance. SP-418 is to undergo weekly examinations to ensure that the removal of one is not causing harm and that all portions of 418 are still in place. That sounds to me like they probably are, in fact, a jigsaw. No object with an edge capable of punctured normal human skin, including materials such as paper, or that is capable of being converted into such an object, is permitted in 418's containment cell. 
As reading is not available to 418, he's provided with a library of contemporary and classical television and films stored as media files on a modified and padded laptop computer. His privilege is to be suspended if at any time 418 appears to be attempting to damage said laptop to gain access to a sharp edge. One is to be kept at internal body temperature in a medical containment unit in a secure location. Should 418 become a security or containment threat, one is to be incinerated. 418 is not to be informed of its location. So... 418 is a human male of Native American descent in his late 30s, exact age unknown, with black hair and brown eyes. His physical fitness and intelligence are above average, but not to an extraordinary degree. He possesses the capacity of autonomous and atomic separation, a trait he claims to be hereditary. 418 has extensive experience as an industrial saboteur and related fields. 418 was apprehended while infiltrating Site Blank under the employ of an individual currently believed to be affiliated with Marshall Carter and Dark Limited. I, I keep assuming that that means limited, but I'm honestly not sure. Anyway, when 418 is injured in such a way that his skin is broken, the injury will near instantaneously grow in length until it severs a portion of his body. Such injuries are uniform and clean with no variation or resistance due to tissue type. Okay. Despite the severe appearance of these injuries, the portions of 418's body will continue to function as if they were so attached to each other, even if an organ is severed. For example, blood in a blood vessel that has been severed will travel from one segment to the other in instantly as though the gap was not there. The same is true of materials taken in by the body. 418 can eat and drink while his head is severed and he can hear through a severed ear. I mean, uh, severing the ear wouldn't really stop the ability to hear. The hole is in the head, not the, the ear. If the, the severed portion is placed back in contact with the location from which it was severed, it reconnects with no sign of injury. 418 has trained extensively with his abilities and is able to consciously control many muscles, muscle functions not normally under human control, such as uh, peristalsis, allowing him to use his severed portions and remove organs for a variety of purposes. One is his heart, which was removed as a control on 418's behavior. And there's an interview here. Okay, the interview is a whole separate page. Never mind. I wonder why it's a whole separate page, though. Okay, testing log. Test sequence 4187 conducted between 1900 and something hundred hours on blankety blank blank by Dr. Blank. It's probably 1900 and something else because after that it would just be 2000 or 2000, whatever. A standard foundation combat knife applied to the wrist. Hand severed. He reports mild discomfort and that this is a normal reaction to his abilities. Approximately 0.5 cc blood loss due to cut, no lasting injury of any kind. Comments, a baseline for the abilities. The potential use for 418 nerve tissue for data transmission is to be investigated. Stimulus 2, zinc plated masonry nail. Apply it with a standard maintenance hammer to his hand. Nail driven into hand. Hand is divided in half laterally across the point of injury. Reported a brief moment of extreme pain at point of entry. No lasting injury. Requested a break in testing. Request denied. Stimulus 3, a standard maintenance hammer applied to left forearm. Arm broken, extreme pain. Healed within human norms, the arm is then severed due to the action of sharp bone fragments on his own abilities. Arm kept separated for the duration of the healing process to observe the process and to prevent it being severed by the unhealed edges of the bones. Morale and cooperation have been significantly damaged since this test. A standard Bunsen burner applied to the back of his left hand. The hand burned, reports significant pain, and assaults the doctor. Injury heals within human norms. 27 bullets fired from an assault rifle, 19 of which hits. Reports extreme pain from each of the successful hits. Each severs 418 as with Stimulus 2. Goes into shock and is reassembled, given medical treatment and returned to his containment cell. No lasting injury, one is recovered at this point. Note, Dr. Blank was not permanently injured. The doctor has been uh, mentored on proper test planning with regards to SP morale and cooperation. While the data is valuable, such intensive testing should be reserved for over overtly hostile SCPs. So I wonder how that interview went. Um, interviewer Mr. Mellows, Navajo speaker, and Dr. Lee, a science researcher. Also present, three members of the Foundation Security. Forward, this is the third attempt at an opening interview. Both previous attempts were hindered by an apparent inability by 418 to speak English. The language of communication identified as Navajo. Interview intents are as follows. Gain base profile information on a 418, ascertain the reason for his intrusion into the Foundation, and ascertain a broad understanding of the abilities to facilitate primary containment. 
418 was at the time referred to under its provisional reference code TCP, Temporary Containment Procedure, AAZ1 on all transcripts, as such references have now been edited to 418. This dialogue represents a conversation translated from Navajo. Site Blank is the housing site of Site SCP Blank, which ne necessitates personnel to rotate a series of dietary supplement added to various water supplies as data A to F. Begin log. Very well, Doctor, let's get started. I don't know what kind of accent this would be. Uh, do you wish to direct the questioning or shall I? I trust you, Mellows. Just get this guy to talk to me. Good day. My name is Mr. Mellows. I understand you seem to only speak Navajo. I need to establish what you know about us and what will happen to you. You understand? <laughs> I understand you, white man. Really? Hmm. Can I offer you some tea? Or offer you tea? I typically have a cup around, around now. I can easily have another brought in. Shake's head. What then? Coffee? Water? Water. What about you, Doctor? Lee cup of tea? Now? Really? Uh, uh, well, uh, why not? Indicates Foundation Security Team Member. Two teas and one water. Don't forget the milk. Nothing special, just tea. Now that the pleasantries are out of the way, who are you and why are you here? I'm Laughing Badger. Indeed. And why are you here? Your people hold description redacted. This is an affront to my people. I see. Ah, the tea. Doctor, it sounds like he was here for SCP Blank. When did you first learn? Wait, Mr. Mellows, I need to I need to talk to you. Do you have the logs we pulled? Thank you. Wait here. Well, isn't exactly a thing you have much say in, is it? Mr. Mellows and Doctor Lee exit. Log suspended for 17 minutes. Uh, Doctor Lee and Mr. Mellows return. We know. Know what, white man? Drop the act. You came here for SCP Blank. Look, holds up an image. This is a little thing called CCTV. It is a nice little image of you reacting in shock at seeing it through the observation deck window. You didn't know it was here. That struck us as odd. Then there was something you said. A front. It's just the way you said that word. It sounded a little like you were from Brooklyn. Now you haven't touched that cup of water, probably because when you heard someone say water D, you thought it was some kind of drug, but it isn't. So we think you're stalling for time. Maybe you're expecting rescue. And I have to say, you've stonewalled marvelously until this point. True enough, but now I reckon you better quit, or we'll start with the more interesting kinds of interrogation. Okay, okay, you caught me. So, expletive what? Why should I tell you anything? Well, I'm sorry to have wasted your time, Mr. Mellows. You can leave now. If it gives us more trouble, we'll just have to resort to supplementary interrogation. Mr. Mellows leaves for 18 clearance no longer required by Mellows. Revoked. Right, you bastard. You just made me look like... Whatever that expletive would be. So either you tell me what I want to know, or I'll make you wish you had. So, what do you want to know? Probably, who the fuck are you? Why the fuck are you here? And what the fuck do you do? I won't tell you my name or betray my employer, bad for business, but if you want to know what I do... 418 lunges at Dr. Lee holding what was later identified as a 23 centimeter long section of large intestine. He throws this at Dr. Lee and branches a foundation combat knife at the security personnel. An altercation ensues and 418 is restrained by Foundation Security. 418 managed to incapacitate one guard and permanently blind another in this altercation. Security guards assigned to 418 in the future are to be issued bat with batons rather than edged weapons. The intestine proceeds to strangle Dr. Lee who falls unconscious. He is later freed and revived by security. End log. Dr. Lee made a full recovery. 418 appears to have stolen the knife from the security guard who brought the cup of water and used it to sever a portion of his intestine under the table. All further interviews with 418 are to be conducted in a minimal equipped cell. No rescue attempt was made for three months. Following the realization that he had been abandoned, 418 became more amenable, stating his mission was to retrieve compromised data on Dr. Blank. He claims not to know his employer and acted only through a third party. Such third party contact and the current role of Dr. Blank make MC and D the most likely employer. Okay, so I guess as far as human jigsaw goes, it was actually Jigsaw Puzzle and not Human Jigsaw the Implement. Now let's see what the window to the world is. It's safe, apparently. Sir. SCP-419 is to be kept within a steel alloy frame and attached to its accommodating wall space. And what does that say? Alloy is 980X Hesla. No covering or casing is apparent, or excuse me, is present. 419 currently resides in a room inside Site 33, dimensions 3x5x4 meters. All of the walls in the containment unit, including the one behind 419, are made of a mesh of plastic, steel, and concrete. 
On the north facing wall of the containment room is a viewing bay leading to another room with the same dimensions, and it says... Note that there is no physical barrier between the viewing bay and 419. Two guards are positioned outside of the containment room near the viewing bay and are authorized to use lethal force. They shift every three hours. 419 must be cleaned daily with an ordinary window cleaning supplies. Any personnel tasked with maintenance must not suffer from acrophobia. Yeah, acrophobia. Oh. There's a small red bird outside my window. I think it's a cardinal. I'm sorry for being distracted by that. I saw a flash of red above me and it, it looks like it's a, it's a small female cardinal. Um, anyway. Constant monitoring of 419 must take place from the viewing bay in order to ensure that the view through 419 does not change significantly. In the event that it does, contact Site Director Blank. Access to 419 is prohibited except under special circumstances and permission from Site Director. Also, the irony is not lost on me that I was distracted by something outside of my window right after talking about suffering ac acrophobia from looking outside of a window. Uh, 419 is a large pane of reinforced glass, 1.5 by 3.6 by 7... Uh, 1.5 meters by 3.6 meters by 7.6 centimeters in dimensions. One side of 419 does not allow light to pass through. Instead, it displays a view of what appears to be an extra-dimensional urban environment. This phenomenon is c only present when viewed directly by a human subject. Photographs, motion sensors, and vision-enhancing objects such as glasses or contacts all act on 419 as if it were a mirror. The scene viewed through 419 appears to be outside, but lacks any natural lighting, regardless of the time it is viewed. No superterrestrial forms such as celestial bodies are visible. The view would appear to originate from a vantage point high above ground level. Approximately 800 lux of light emanates from 419, despite the lack of a light source. The source of this phenomenon is theorized to be whatever environment 419 displays. Light from 419's testing chamber does not affect this scene. The building visible through 419 appears similar to those of Victorian architectural period. However, they tend to have unusual, almost imperceptible, changes that make them appear warped or twisted, or occupying spaces they should not. Much, if not all, of the area viewed through 419 is non-Euclidean. Estimates of the size of this city vary depending on when it is viewed, and have ranged from approximately 12 square kilometers to over 60. A multitude of neon lights and signs have been noted, but are not in any known language. Organisms have been viewed walking, albeit only en masse due to their relative small, relatively small size. Their actual size is currently unknown due to the lack of a scale. They appear to be humanoid and dark red in color. However, the lack of a of available computerized assistance and the obvious flaws in the human eye does not allow for a higher level of detail to be ascertained. Due to their seemingly advanced level of technology, the running theory among researchers is that this is not their actual skin color, but rather their clothing. Did I really see a small red bird outside my window while reading about an, a mysterious window that shows small red creatures? Is that really a thing that just happened? Okay. Uh, note. September 27th, or 2013. 419 seems to be aging at an abnormally fast rate. We currently believe this is due to the atmosphere on the other side, though we obviously cannot test it to know for sure. At this speed, 419 could come, become non-functional as soon as 2019. What this will mean, we do not know yet. So, prior to incident uh, 419B, which is now obsolete, occasionally large metallic constructs have been viewed moving through the streets, followed by large masses of the humanoids. During these occasions, such processions compose of all visible movement within the city. Compose all of them. Dr. Blank notes that these processions are highly reminiscent of military marches due to their extremely geometric nature and constant pace. After the incident, Following Incident 419B, the entire landscape viewed through 419 has changed drastically. Many of the buildings appear to be lit on fire or smoldering, much of the ground is covered in rubble, and there is almost no visible movement from the previously described red humanoids. However, what appears to be similarly shaped dark blue humanoids have been observed performing similar processions. Approximately blank percent of the buildings consistently observed before Incident 419B have collapsed. Visibility has also been significantly obscured by an opaque gas, theorized to be smoke. Upon closer inspection, a multitude of dark gray figures are visible in the streets, but remain stationary. The implications of this event are unknown. Sounds like some sort of war happened, to be honest. Okay, so, that about does it for this episode, if I don't continue to read things about SCP whatever the hell. But, it's only been 24 minutes, so I'm going to read a few more of that SCP. Are the entries from it. Da, 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 da. Experiment log. 
I believe we left off at the, uh, temperature changing... What's it called? Um... Here it is, the reverse temperature cream puff. So, uh, 500 yen while powered. That kind of a cookie. I don't, I don't know what that means. What does this mean? A, fict a fictitious... A fictitious chemical compound conceived by American biochemist and science fiction author Isaac Asimov. Okay, so it's a cookie made of that. Uh, three chocolate chip cookies in plastic wrapping. Tasting sensations were felt at least three seconds before the cookies made con any contact with the mouth, packaging in what appears to be an unrecorded dialect of Bambara. So, 500 yen while powered. Hardtack. A piece of hardtack. Packaging in what was later determined to be heavily Hellenized French written in Greek characters. Item was difficult to consume and tasted meaty. Translation revealed the flavor to be turtle soup. 500 yen while off, energy gas. A soap bubble stabilized inside a transparent plastic can. Packaging in English. Instructions are to pierce a hole and inhale the contained gas. Applying a finger to the bubble will indeed pierce a hole. Inhaling the lavender scented gas causes the bubble to shrink until vanish completely and gave an energized and empowered feeling to the subject. Subject complained for several hours of an irritated and itchy nasal cavity. I imagine I, I imagine snorting energy would do that. 500 yen while powered hazelnut glossette. A package of approximately 12 small hazelnuts covered in chocolate. Packaged in German. DNA matched that of Iranian Coralis Avanilla strands. The Hershey Company does not manufacture this project uh, product. The hell is that? The common hazel. It, okay, it's just a hazelnut. 500 yen while off. Caramelized spider, used to say tarantula. A hairy spider 13 inches in legs being covered in hard caramel. Item was not consumed. Identified as an unrecorded that member. Test showed highly toxic venom was still present in the glands, packaging in an unknown language. And what kind of spider is that? Okie dokie. I kind of wish I had not seen that. Armed spiders. 500 yen while on sculptural candy. A tube containing a bright orange Play-Doh-like paste strongly smelling of citrus. Was malleable and gradually hardened into an exceedingly tough material. Hardening caused subjects' fingers to become trapped. Packaging in unrecorded language written in Cyrillic. 500 yen unpowered. Dr. Pepper's amusing straw. A straw which when looked on from, looked from on end contained what appears to be sugar sweetened Dr. Pepper. Straw contain much more liquid than physically possible, approximate, the, approximately the volume of a normal Dr. Pepper bottle. Packaging in Japanese. 500 yen while powered. Geology arrow. An arrow bar twice as thick as the regular, formed of four layers in four different flavors and colors of chocolate, dark orange, mint, and white. The Nestle company does not manufacture this product. Ma packaging in German. 500 yen while powered. Terry's sick. I don't know what this means whenever things do this. What, is, what does this mean? Sick with square brackets is an abbreviation of Sick Erat Scriptum, which is Latin for Thus It Had Been Written, meaning that the quote prior was transcribed as it was found in the original source, complete with errors, colloquialisms, etc. Okay, so Sick just means as they said it. Terry's Chocolate Pumpkin. A pumpkin shaped piece of chocolate easily broken into 11 quarter shaped pieces. Tasted vaguely of pumpkin and cough syrup. The Kraft Food Company does not make this product, packaging in American English. 300 yen while powered fruits of the loom. A package of three pieces of edible underwear in bright colors, items confiscated, current whereabouts unknown. 500 yen while powered sound bites. Small cookies shaped like onomatopoeia words. When broken or chewed, the items produce the sound corresponding to their text. 10,000 yen when unpowered. Item is a small loaf of round bread in the shape of a pinwheel with six points. Colorful wrapper bears logo for Heaven's Sing Shining Auspicious Bakery, with the tagline, made by angles for angles. Sick. Upon consuming the item, the subject immediately fell to a comatose state, during which he appeared to be in a constant, ex a constant ecstatic state similar to an orgasm. Subject recovered after 50 minutes, although he remained delirious for over two more hours, babbling about gates of pure palladium polished by the multitudin multitudinous host of the Shattered Princess. Dang. That, that is some bread. One yen while powered. A single kernel of popped kettle corn. Ten yen powered. Five pieces of a traditional Indonesian snack known as klepon. Might be klepon. 
item was placed on top of a banana leaf holder and wrapped in plastic with no labels or expiration dates. A hundred yen wall powered a can labeled Paneri Sweat, in blue and white. Some text in Indonesian on the side claiming that this beverage could cure any kind of disease made in Jambang. Straight from Panari's Magic Stone and other gimmicky sounding adverts. Can given to a disposable dude with prostate cancer for testing. After emptying the can, they were thoroughly examined. Results showed that the prostate cancer had disappeared. 1,000 yen wall powered. A small orange box with a radioactive sign on the side. And a small red button on top. Item moved to a heavy duty blast chamber and tested extensively. After thorough examination, it was found to be harmless and does not exhibit any radiation signs at all. The decision was made to test the object with all observers other than the subject observing via a closed circuit camera. When subject pressed the button, a bright flash was recorded and then a small orange mushroom cloud. Subject was unharmed and after the experiment, anyone entering the blast chamber immediately sensed a tangy, heavily orange flavor. Subject had to wash continuously for five hours to rid his body of the scent. Okay, so. I guess I'll read this one too. 300 yen, powered. A styrofoam bowl with a paper lid labeled Instant Morioka Style Ramen. Just add hot water. Instructions written in Japanese indicate to add hot water and let stand for three minutes, then stir well. Contents of the bowl appear to be instant noodles, as well as several small capsules of unknown make and a dusting of white sugar like crystals. Upon adding hot water, the item grew warm for approximately three minutes, then immediately chilled for approximately five degrees Celsius. Upon peeling back the cover, noodles were found to be cooked and floating in a cold beef broth. Capsules were missing and replaced with a slice of fresh watermelon, six slices of thinly roast beef, six pieces of kakakadi digi, ponytail radish kimichi, and half a hard-boiled egg. Contents were edible. Advertising on packaging encouraged users to try our other flavors, including traditional Korean and kimchi mixed. So, I think that's a good stopping point for this episode now, because now it's 31 minutes long instead of 21 minutes long. That being said, this has been Anashi Sasuke, this was episode 99 of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things, and I'll see y'all tomorrow for episode 100. Later!